It's hard to say exactly why vinyl records have come back in full force despite the digital revolution, but here in Detroit, Third Man Records lets you in on the process for pressing top shelf recordings. And the process is mostly unchanged historically, yet updated with some surprising turns, according to Eddie. And that's Jack's brother, if you were wondering. Hey there, Gabe. Nice yeah. to meet you. Welcome to Third Man Pressing here All in right. Detroit. Thank you. We'll be happy to show you around and see you were in our viewing window. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's uh, a one of a kind experience for the customer, the public that can come in, see what we were doing in real time. So, probably the only pressing plant that has that uh, option. A little behind the scenes. Exactly. Makes it a little more personal for me now. I know how it's done. It does. Or at least to get a glimpse. Yeah. Exactly. This is where the needle hits the vinyl, if you if you will. Yeah. So um, why don't we go take a yeah, look at what's to. going on for us? Awesome. Um, as you look around, this was a parking garage at one time uh, that we just kind of fit in here into the neighborhood, into this the city of manufacturing um, uh, that doesn't directly involve the auto industry. But um, right. what we're doing our part here to you know to create jobs, to uh, create excitement, create yeah. these memories, and you know we're, we're we're making little time machines is what we're doing. Yeah. This is just our uh, reference library for all the jobs that we have done. Recently, we just did the new uh, Rack and Tours release. It was all pressed here, all yeah. the three different versions. The standard version, the indie version, the uh, exclusive uh, club version for our vault. Right. Uh, over 80,000 pieces were done here wow. in, in less than a month. So that was uh, pretty impressive on our part to yeah. uh, the most records in the shortest amount of time for us yeah. uh, because of the deadline and obviously the excitement knowing right. the record was coming out. Go so back here, in, this, in the middle of the room here we have uh, eight semi-automatic presses with different configurations for whatever the jobs entail. Right now they're loading their hopper with the material so the granules of uh, PVC that we get in, in the variety of colors and what we're, depending on what we're pressing, this is what would go into the hopper and then the extruder takes that material and pushes it through the tube and we can walk around this way and see it up close. So what we have here is a duplex system. There are two presses um, and an extruder in between. So the extruder is working in conjunction with the press to make the puck and the blob of material that uh, eventually gets pressed. Right. So right now, we have a mold here that's opened. Tabby is going to load it with the label because that gets it pressed into the plastic. Uh, and then her puck is ready to go. She'll load that in there and then send it in. And now, it's a very hot puck. It's about 300 degrees. Uh, there is high pressure steam going into that mold right now to keep it hot. And then, it'll, you see now it's raising the hydraulic is kicking in yeah. under extreme pressure right now and then holding it. And then the hose kicks through uh, chilled water to cool everything off, lock in those grooves, and then uh, the cycle time when it's over, out comes a finished record. We trim it and she's giving it a quick once over, uh, at a glance, kind of a, the first step in the QC part of the process, and then stacks them, puts cooling plates on them in between, we let them cure and yeah. uh, uh, cool overnight before we do our visual inspection. So once you get to this process, that's really, I mean, it's pretty quick. Once you get from the puck to the vinyl, like a exactly. minute maybe? Or? About a minute cycle, yeah. yeah. From the time you load the label to so the time you're trimming, right. about a minute or so. Yeah. Yep. How so. many records can you guys put out in a day? Our capacity right now for the 10 presses that we have uh, is around 5,000 a day. Oh wow. Uh, so between the semi-automatics, which are, you're talking about 100 an hour or so, yeah. uh, up to the fully automatics, which you have one every 30 seconds, yeah. um, we, can, we can crank them out pretty fast. So uh, it's, uh, and we're looking to expand, uh, obviously, and grow just as any other company would. Yeah. So the process itself really hasn't changed a lot. When you go all the way back to how the record is born uh, from the direct cut acetate, yeah. Uh, you know, that's how Edison invented it, so uh, that part of the technology has pretty much remained unchanged. What has improved is uh, on these presses... How you get there. Exactly. Yeah. Or the, and the material. So the PVC yeah. is much uh, more durable and uh, quieter, if you will. Yeah. Um, the machines that we have now are not so much uh, manual as they are. You can control 
um, the different parameters of steam and chilled water and hydraulics uh, at a, at a right. touch uh, digitally. So yeah, yeah. the operator can actually customize and diagnose on the fly and kind of make those adjustments right. as they go. You're creating something that's, for lack of a better word, archaic with like new digital parameters. That's so true. that you can come out with the best form of that yep. piece of history. Yeah, that's pretty Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Yeah. We want to, you know, it's got to sound good. Obviously, yeah. the, you know, that's the that's always the, the audio is the, uh, you know, that's the number one thing that people are looking for. Right. Uh, all the other aesthetics um, that you're, and the variables that you're dealing with uh, constantly and just finding that sweet spot in every step of the yeah. process because it's touched by human hands from the time it's cut to the time it's going into the package and wrapped up and out the door. So what happens next? So after these records get stacked and uh, cooling plates are helping weigh them down, yeah. keep them nice and flat, cool and cure overnight, um, they will go on to the next step of the visual QC before they go get sleeved and packaged uh, fully. Presses here will operate um, doing this custom blend that we came up with for uh, this particular release. The challenge on this one was to create um, a color scheme of purple and yellow to coincide with the color of the shag carpet that was in the rehearsal space in the third floor attic when the go was before they recorded their first record. So at the rehearsal space, um, there was a similar color. Uh, and stained carpet, I guess, right. <laughs> um, that we seemed to nail. As soon as we uh, got this design, they were like, that's it, that's exactly what it looked like. All our third man uh, releases have in the uh, run out groove or the dead wax, uh, we've inscribed certain messages that are, could be anything from an inside joke to any variety of things that are kind of, can be cryptic, um, some not so obvious as others, right, but right. always fun to be like, okay, what's the next message right. gonna be, you know? Here we have a, a, one of the fully automatic machines. Oh, okay. So these are all brand new. There are actually companies uh, making new presses for the first time in 30 years. This particular one from Sweden uh, that we had installed about a year ago uh, is a, a very efficient machine. Um, again, it can uh, the records it can turn out about roughly every 30 seconds, and. Uh, very consistent, very high quality, uh, very quiet vinyl, very reliable and effective machine. You can see Chris here is, uh, has his headphones on. He's listening to something off of any one of these uh, presses that are in operation. So he is checking the audio quality while, in real time while they're pressing. Uh, yeah, it's it very looks important. like the, the Go album we just looked at. Right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, he's pulled uh, one of those at random off of the spindle and he's giving it a spin. He's gonna to try to listen to it front to back, or if the operator may have spotted something, they may say to him, hey, right. can you go check this out for me and report back? Right. Or he may hear something that is not readily visible yeah. and come back to them and say, hey, there's an issue on here. Right. We got a little bit of no fill, or we have a right. little bit of, uh, there's a, a little scuff or something like that. So they may either have to you know, clean their metal off a little bit or uh, use those uh, controls to, to make a change in the steam or the chilled water or hydraulics yeah. in order to eliminate any of that uh, odd sounds that may come up, like a brushing noise or a little tick or a click or something like that. Yeah, so any variety of things that can happen um, in the process, uh, it's unpredictable. Right. Um, you can make um, a lot of good looking records that may not sound good right. uh, and vice versa. I mean, you guys can tell you care about the sound. Absolutely, we all want to make good and records. That's his job, right? I mean, here every day. Just yeah, that's like, it. That's what he yeah. does. His whole shift, he's yeah. doing nothing but listening. Yeah. Yep. We have three guys doing that, right. and just kind of sharing that load or that responsibility of uh, making sure the records are good. Right. Well, thanks for showing me around. That was pretty awesome. Oh, it's great. We love showing yeah. the place off. So. I can't wait to make a vinyl someday, so I can come here and uh, get a press. We'll get you up on stage, and we got the studio out back. Well. We'll hook you right up and we'll do a direct cut to acetate. You get one chance, <laughs> and that's it. That's a little scary, but all right. <laughs> Walk yeah. the tightrope. That's right. <laughs> this video is inspired by our PBS series, Reconnecting Roots. 
Visit ReconnectingRoots.com to watch the full episodes or to check out our music and podcast. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe so we can keep making more. Thanks for watching.